in this neighborhood is 1600 You're still right in the neighborhood. So, that's what I'm saying. It's 1600 dollars for a studio in this neighborhood right now. And they're putting in uh, small units uh, because Supervisor Wiener said they could um, at a less cost. They they're still having to pay for all that construction price, so they have to have a return on their investment. But still, and but still, twelve hundred dollars is below market rate right now because of, I think one bedroom claim for three or four thousand. That's ridiculous. So, the, the, well, yeah, yes, it is ridiculous, but it's not. Don't blame them. They're just one, you know, one entity. So I, I, the alternative see, would be if, you, if you're able to find a nonprofit builder. <laughs> I've, been, I've, been in, I've been in a meeting with the Ford Land Company not too long ago. And it was about the last, last month sometime. So I'm, I'm, I'm aware of the, of the conversation that they brought out to us in that particular meeting. That's why I'm going to speak in this one this way. I'm not trying to be controversial. But I'm just putting out what I know and I understand. I, I'm not a dummy. So when I hear things, I know what I'm, I know what I'm speaking. But what but what about that? Um, how many affordable low market rate units are going to have? Are you going to put a fee they're, into? they're all market rate. So you're putting a fee into the affordable housing fund? Uh, group housing doesn't require a fee. Uh, uh -huh. I mean that's the whole idea right. of group housing in the code, and it goes beyond Supervisor Weaver. It's been in there a long time, but nobody's been able to figure out how to actually build it, right? Uh, is that if you produce smaller units, they will be more affordable than if you have to build all of the all the accoutrements of a normal apartment. And normal apartments today, I mean, I'm building a project on Market Street a mile from here. That'll be four thousand, five thousand dollars a uh, uh, a month. That's what it costs to build in this city. My other question, David, I'll get to you in a second. My other question is, putting in market rate housing at Turk and Leavenworth is fine. Where are they going to go shopping? Where are they going to go to other amenities that are not in our Turk and Leavenworth? And what is putting in that much market rate housing going to do for the cost for the people who live there now who are on a fixed income? Okay, well, let's try that. Hopefully, if you bring more people into the neighborhood where there are none there now, there will be more support for services like grocery store. Otherwise, they're going to have to go to Safeway, uh, you know, down in Mission Bay or Safeway up on Market Street um, because those are the closest stores that we have now. Um, as far as uh, displacing people or having an impact on other people, nobody lives there right now. So it's not displacing anybody. Now, there is a theory that I don't uh, subscribe to that says if you build something nice next to something that's not nice, it will make the not nice be more expensive for some reason that the good stuff impacts the bad stuff in a way that hurts the tenants there. And I've never seen that actually studied because from what I understand, people under rent control have their income, their rents fixed. And most of the tenants in this area are rent controlled or subsidized in some way, and so they can't be affected by something that's new next door. But they can, uh, because this, we, this is what we are fighting, having out here gentrification. Property owners are seeing, okay, your profit coming in, it's gonna be market rate. Well, if we move, if we, um, Tell us how uh, our building that we can move everybody out and put condos in our building. That's fine. This is what's happening. This go after the Ellis Act. Don't go after new housing. Go but after the things that, that uh, cause that to it's happen. Not that, but, well, our concern is here, the biggest concern we have is the loss of affordability of our businesses. Because our businesses serve those of us who are low income. and. I have a friend who lives at Fox Plaza who's on subsidized house, she's subsidized there. And the grocery store across the street sells bread for $9 a loaf. And she's having to go six or seven blocks out of her way just to buy bread because every, all the stores, not to build the whole the buildings, the stores have raised their prices so far that they're 
outpricing everybody. And even in Fox Plaza, a third of the building, the tenants have moved out because the owners are jacking up rents like crazy. Yeah. Um, well, again, that's a rent control building, so I don't quite understand that. Um, I mean, I, that building happens to be well, occupied can, well, primarily by Hastings students. I, well, I mean, they can't afford to live there because the services, not the rent, okay. the services have gone up. That, okay. that's, my, that's my point I'm trying okay. to make. Okay, well, that's a good point, and that may be happening. I mean, uh, you go to uh, Real Foods or someplace farther where you can get a, a cheaper loaf of bread. Um, you know, I used to go to the Dale place on the Mission, you know, and get bread there. Um, you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> yeah, actually two questions. What, what, what is the square footage of the, of the studios you're talking about? And the second question is, could you define group housing? I'm not quite... Yeah. Uh, the units will go from 180 square feet to about 220. So you're looking at it right here. So if you're looking at a 180 square foot unit, which yeah. is a studio, a typical studio in this area is probably maybe close to 400 square feet, three something, let's say 375 or so. So if that's going for, let's say, $1,600, what are your studios, what are, what, what's, what are you targeting? We'll see what the market pays, but we well, think, at this moment, we think it'll be in that range. And it will be in that range because it's a new building. Uh, I didn't talk about all the uh, innovations that are going into the construction, whether it's uh, you know energy efficiency, you know uh, gray water systems. Uh, there is no parking. There are no subterranean garages for parking. So it's a uh, steel structure and a modular type of construction that uh, Swinerton Construction is working with us on, and the architect uh, Sustainable Living Innovations. So there are partners in putting this project together. Um, so to answer your question, what will the rents be? We have pro forma rents to make it uh, feasible, and we hope we get those rents. We may not. They could define group housing? Oh, I'm sorry, group housing. Uh, you must provide a bathroom, uh, a sleeping uh, area, and a kitchenette. Uh, as soon as you provide a full kitchen, you're considered a dwelling unit, and you kick into uh, a lot of the other requirements. So it's purposely kept minimal. Yeah. Okay, now, it's, it's interesting, the words you're using. Uh, there's a lot of buzz about using, uh, using these uh, shipping containers for, uh, for, 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 for low income, for, or, or as you would say, uh, group housing or something, where you, you know, like, uh, it's, you know, this is the buzz thing right now. Are we talking about that? Because you said steel. You said uh, you, the people you work with, uh, some about uh, re not recycling, but uh, sustainable. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, I mean, how does that work? Well, I could talk about it for a long time, but uh, I will just say that this will be the most innovative uh, residential project anywhere in the United States. And it, I, I've done this for 30 years. I built 15, I've been involved in 15 to 16 housing projects in San Francisco that are all built with people living, and nothing has come close to what we're proposing from a construction point of view. Um, what was your other question? I'm sorry. Uh, well, that was one of them. Um, I'm, I'm kind of, in, like I say, it's. Uh, uh, I, I am too. Okay, well, it's shipping containers. Oh, it's shipping containers. You know what's interesting? Guess what the most affordable housing in the United States is? Trailers. Yeah. Tra across the country, in the foothills, get out of the city, and that's half of all the new housing built today is trailers, right? And it's been a long holy grail that if you could take a trailer and slip it into a, um, a structure, call it eight stories, call it 20 stories, it shouldn't matter, just take that thing and slip it in and slip it in and slip it in, you would be able to construct affordable housing. Right? Modular. Modular housing. Nobody's been able to do it. Right? It's a crazy idea mm -hmm. in, a, in a lot of ways. But what if you could take a unit and divide it into panels? A floor panel, wall panels, a bathroom panel, the kitchen already in the panel, the bathroom already in the panel, the utility wall with low voltage uh, and data systems in the panel, and you put four down, 
four, uh, two down, two across, and you close it in 100% with glass on the outside and make that snap together. If you could do that, and all the plumbing snapped together, and all the electric snapped together, and all the acoustic was taken care of, and all the energy insulation was taken care of, and people still had a lot of light and air. So I think that has been done. I'd like to see where it has been done. Europe? Just show me. Because it's been tried, it's been tried. It's been done in the, it's been done in the we, We've just finished a, the first prototype in Seattle, 24 years near the University of Washington. So people just moved in this month for the first time. If it's been done, I'd like to know where it is. So this is not aimed at techie people coming into town, is it? No. It's, it's, for who, it's for whoever. Yeah, it's you know. probably going to be techie people. Get real. Of course. Uh, well, one thing. It is real. OK, what, what happens when, OK, we had the house. I think that's a little but presumptuous. But it's not yeah. going to be. The, Name somebody rich. It's not gonna, no. In it's fact, gates or, I think it's it's in a way you talk about transitional housing. I think it's kind of transitional in a way that nobody can really. See. So you don't get a parking lot for your car. And yeah. Right there, a lot. That's gonna turn a lot of. If you're making two hundred grand a year, that's no. probably not gonna work. For you. Well, yeah. If you're making that 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 much money, you're not gonna want like a, you know dorm dorm like yeah. housing. You're not gonna. So live next to the Golden, the Upper yeah. YMCA on Leavenworth. We have a question. Yeah, here. sorry. On um, page seven of your 361 Kirk Street, uh -huh. you got a garage. Better go. Yeah, and uh, no, no. it's an excellent point because the it slopes down. Yeah, I, I uh, this, yeah. yeah, so those are the spaces that are dedicated for the Oasis Hotel by an easement. So uh, no parking goes to the building. But they get their garbage out of there and they get their parking. Okay. Good, good, good point. Said no parking. <laughs> so I just have a couple of questions. I'm just looking at everything now. Um, it's a little bit to take in. Will there be um, like any connector or any between these? If you look at maybe the picture shows it, uh, there's actually a tunnel there well, already. Looking at the, I know. And I it should have a little dotted line. And, and it looks like there is some, yeah. something, yes. So there's an easement under the hotel that connects it to it. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's like underground and not like, uh, you know. It actually is on grade. Oh, okay. But uh, it's not like, you know, up in the air, like no. two towers of the Hilton. You know? No, no. Um, and then, um, what's my other question? What other, um, so no parking, but so will there be, uh, I guess, no ride share, car share, anything? Like that. Uh, what about for bicycles? Yeah, we have we have to have bicycles. So I think there are thirty stalls at each front. Okay. That's good. What if there's a downturn in the economy and you're stuck with the property because all the venture capital has been burned through and people have left town? You're you're absolutely right. Could happen. We take a risk. Would your risk be more on the people who can't afford than the ones who are coming in who can't afford? The risk be on them because they, if they, if they stay, they have to make, they have to adjust all the new the changes that took place in the high price and everything else, and then you come, new people that are coming in. Now, this is the truth. This is a tech boom. So, so, so most of the tech people are coming into this town to, to, to develop their projects, their businesses, and, and everything else, right? Well, but she makes a good point because right. we were all here in 07, 08, 09, 10 where actually rents dropped significantly in oh, San Francisco. Exactly. They did. Unless you were in rent control where they kept going up. But market rents dropped in 08. And, it, and developers, my company included, went out of business. Um, and it's been the third cycle that I've gone through. And I can almost guarantee you there'll be a fourth cycle. And a fifth and a yeah. Because some of us were here with Doc Collin with us. Yeah, well, we were here. I, I, was, I was reminiscing because uh, one of the projects I got approved across from Opera Plaza is now the Tenderloin uh, Elementary School because we went bust. Oh. You know, 240 units never got built, but the school yeah. district uh, picked it up, and there's a school there now. So there's oh. always boom and bust, and sometimes there's opportunities in bust. So you're the first trimester right now. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. You got a map for 
You don't have to. When you build a project, everybody puts a condo in, which means that's an option that you can go with. Well, let, let, me, let me answer that a little bit. You have to do a condo. Okay. And you know why you have to do a condo map? Because once it's occupied, you can never convert it. Right? So if you're building something new, it's almost brain dead not to map it. Because now you can't even map a five unit project or a four unit project. You're down to TICs that are three unit projects. So that's the loss. So I, I don't know if it's a Achilles. If it's a, I don't know how I feel about it. I mean, I, I can see different things about it. But those could potentially become condos. Yeah. So could this space. Condo almost anything. Not this one. Not this one. Question. Um, I want to know uh, how how much uh, how much uh, uh, the rent uh, about what the rent. Yeah, we said 1,200, 1,400, 1,600 for those units. Come on. Oh, well, Fred has got a place on Trinity Plaza. Those new towers over there on Market Street. Oh, they've got to be pretty expensive. Uh, 18, 1800 yeah. a month. But that's because she. Like, like now, she wants to fight for her castle. She to call me now and ask the room for it. Well, the building's not there yet, so maybe. Yeah. Could be more. Yeah. I'm getting back to planning. Who's your planner at the uh, uh, Our planner is Kate, Kate O'Kine. And what's your time schedule for that? Uh, June 4th will be in front of the Planning Commission. So that I just have another couple of questions. So is there any prep for retail? With yes. Okay. And actually we have, uh, I'll throw this out and see what you guys think. Uh, we have a better chance on um, Turk because of what you said, it's too loud, it's deep. So what we're thinking there is that we can do a, uh, because we have a big gray water system, we actually need to use this gray water in some way, and one of the best ways to use it is laundromats and washing. And uh, we're thinking of doing a downstairs uh, nice laundromat with a coffee house and uh, you know some uh, uh, you know food items to purchase uh, above ground, so that you can do your laundry downstairs and be open to the public. Right? Do your laundry downstairs, and the, the we don't have laundries in our units. They're too small. So uh, by pr producing a laundromat on the uh, premises, make it convenient for them and make it convenient for everybody else and kind of make the laundromat not this terrible, you know, have you been to Brainwash mm -hmm. or the one up on, yeah. uh, on Market like Street? It, yeah. I mean, they're, they're great. They're, they're better. <laughs> well, yeah. They're better. But that, one of our ideas for the Turk Street, um, and uh, we don't have a it, on, on Leavenworth, it's 2,000 square feet, so it's pretty small. So we don't have, and it's very deep. Retailers like to be right up yeah, front on the street. On the street. Yeah. And the deep space, you, you know, they don't like. Well, yeah. I think that's a good idea with a little cafe type thing. That's yeah, yeah, idea. that's what we thought. Very good idea. Yeah. Um, and actually, there'd be an elevator. There'd have to be an elevator. You know, you have to do everything to current code. So you have to have handicapped access all the way through the building. One thing, if you can, if you can give me a call on your case number uh, for this issue. Okay. Do you know it? Uh, do you know our case number? No, our case, case number. number. Case number. I don't know. Yeah. We do have the posters on the uh, fences. Well, I, I don't. I um, am, if I don't get around. Okay, but I'm just saying, anybody, the yeah. case number is there. Because um, this way, if we decide to support you, uh, we'd love your support. Um, <laughs> That I, can, I can get an email though. And, yeah, and that would be my next question is what other, because you mentioned, I guess, well, for lack of a better word, um, uh, I don't know, the polls just sounds, you know, kind of negative, but you had mentioned that there, you know, were certain certain requirements because of the type of housing that it is. So are there any other that you know of, any other um, like requirements or? Well, there's an overall requirement of good design. So we have. We have a roof deck, and we have the outdoor space on the roof deck. We do have the solar um, collectors up there as well. But so, I mean, as far as you know, you still have to abide by like, you know, the shadow and the environmental. Yes. I mean, we've been through, you spend a year, talk about what well, housing costs a lot. Yeah. You spend a year on traffic studies, shadow studies, wind wind studies in this area. It's really big. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, then there's landscaping and streetscape and, and uh, a lot of other. 